Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see in the title, um, today I'm going to tell you guys a couple tips on how to travel on a college budget. Um, Money-wise, I'm going to do a completely different video on how I... Because I actually have three jobs, so I do try to save a lot of the money so I can travel and things like that. But, but I'm just going to hop right into the video just so... You guys can get all the info you want. Um, so when you start planning for a trip, you always want to think who, what, where, when. Those four are the most important. And like, okay, so to, to begin, um, I think the most important place is to make a list of where you want to go. One of my biggest 2018 New Year's resolutions was to travel because the last time I took a flight other than New York was two years ago I said 2018 I'm traveling I'm going places so far for me I've booked um flights to New York New Orleans Atlanta London and Amsterdam all of those flights or gas money included to get to these places came out to under a thousand dollars and I feel like we're at the age that we can notice that like $1,000 really isn't that much money. It is attainable. It is something that can happen. But then again, you don't have to go as hard as I'm going and just like travel to all these places. Like you can start very slow and very small. Um, so first you would want to make a list of where you would want to go. After that, I would say start looking for hotels and flight. But what I use is an app called Hopper. And then what that is, it's like pretty much you type in where you're leaving from and where you want to go to and it tells you the cheapest times to travel to those places. So let's say you want to go to the Bahamas or you want to go to LA or something like that. Obviously, traveling more in the summer is going to be so much more expensive. I also use kayak.com because it lists pretty much every possible flight that you can look up but it puts it into one big search engine. For flights, there's two ways to really do it. If you're flying by yourself, if you're traveling by yourself, sometimes it is good to book a more expensive flight just because those more expensive flights have baggage included. You have to always think of like every factor that could be added into your traveling experience, you know? So to New York is when I learned this. Um, we traveled with Spirit, but with Spirit, you do have to pay for every single bag. You have to pay for $35 for a carry-on there and back. So that's already $70. So my ticket was $70. I ended up having to pay another $70. So it came out to $147 um, and then some change when in reality, this is where I learned my lesson. I could have just bought in a ticket with JetBlue that was $136 and it would have included... Um, all my flights, uh, pff, not flights, all my baggage and everything like that. But if you are traveling in a group, my biggest recommendation for you is to fly cheap. So fly on Frontier, fly on Spirit, fly on United. Go on these like $70 trips to wherever you're going and then buy one checked bag. The checked bag is allowed to be, I believe it's like 50 pounds. And if you're going on a quick trip, like a weekend getaway, something like that, you don't need 50 pounds worth of stuff. So if you're flying with friends, you guys can split that $30 checked bag fee. Maybe and then two people per bag, you could probably do more honestly. And then you'd only be paying $100 rather than $140 like I did on, on accident, you know? Also recommend trying to travel within your country. Um, I'm located in Orlando, so I am really trying to branch out and see all of the US. Um, go places that I've never been before. So that's why I am going to New York, New Orleans, um, Atlanta. I was actually born in Atlanta, but I'll always keep going back to Atlanta. And yeah, as for London and Amsterdam, when I go there, um, the lighting is so fire right now. Um, when I go to London, I'm flying out of London to Amsterdam. A ticket from London to Amsterdam is literally $60. So once you're in a country, it's easier to fly out of that country than directly from where you are um, at that time. Another um, really, really important piece of advice that I would give to you guys is to fly into neighboring airports. So when I flew into New York, 
um, a ticket to to LGA I, oh, or JFK, it was actually like $200 at the time that I was going or $170 plus baggage, things like that. But I flew into Newark, which is in New Jersey, which is literally 30 minutes away from my hotel, which was in Times Square. So I definitely would recommend flying into neighboring places. And like another example of that is when I go to London, I was looking at flights and the flight to into Heathrow is it came out to I think $1,200 but I'm flying into Gatwick and Gatwick is distance from where my aunt lives because I'll get to that later I'm going to be staying it with my aunt in London um the distance from Gatwick to um my aunt to Heathrow and my aunt to Gatwick there's a six minute difference between the two the two so when you do look up these flights it usually says um you can put in the city instead of the specific airport. So you can say New York City, and then it's gonna say all airports. Just click on that, and then the cheapest ones are gonna come up for okay, you. So now that we already have our flights, now we're wondering where am I gonna stay when I'm there? Um, how I personally do it, I work at the Marriott, so I do have um, a discount, but those discounts aren't like a set discount. You always have to check like when is the cheapest time to fly into these places, and when is the cheapest time to have these discounts. Um, ex booking through Expedia, booking through Google Hotels and stuff like that, they do have cheaper room rates for the same rate as like, let's say you just buying off the Marriott website. But if you do have a friend that works at Marriott, there is a friends and family discount as well. So you can always ask for that if you're close to the person and if you're responsible, of course. Um, but I personally, I use my Marriott discount majority of the time. But another option is always to do Airbnbs. Airbnbs are, in case you didn't know, it's pretty much people that have houses in a place and they just want to rent out a room. So you're pretty much just paying for the room for the night. So you probably won't pay more than well it depends on the area of course but it's cheaper than hotels nevertheless and then if your host is nice which most of the time they are because they are open to to like letting you stay in their house they'll help you they'll tell you certain places They're like hey this is a great place to go here's a food it's to fun. that place that you're traveling advice from them for for like what to do where to go things like that um also, another piece of advice is to travel to places that you know you have friends or family. If you know you have friends or family in New Zealand, um, London, anywhere in Europe, Australia, if they're even in New York, if they're in Missouri, if they're in Idaho, if they're in California, Atlanta, you can ask to stay with them and you're pretty much just playing, paying for the flight and then things to do and food at that point. So you can just try to stay with family or friends. Yeah. Find a $120 a night room, and then let's say two people are going, it's $60 a night from there on out. And that's a really good price if you're staying in anywhere, really, and, and especially in a hotel, because they do have amenities that, you know, are fun when you're traveling. You do want to show off your room, you do want to be in a new place, you want to give your all to the experience. Another really big thing of mine, this is something that I, I ended up like, I love doing, is budgeting budgeting is always so important whenever you know you're going on a trip you have to think of every aspect of that trip and then make a budget for it so let's say you know you want to go to um new york and you know you want to go to the moma you know you want to go to the met it's always good to look up those prices ahead of time and just make sure you plan for that so there's not these unexpected fees and you're not going over budget and that when you do come home from vacation you're not you know struggling to make rent or anything like that a piece of advice and this is just me personally they ha always have these city passes no matter where you go if it's like a big place that you're going like new york F miami um cali paris anywhere like that they have these city passes and you really have to do your research on those because majority of the attractions included in the city passes are free so what they're doing is they're making it a bundle. They're saying, oh, you have access to these 90 attractions when in reality you might be getting like $4 off here and there, but they're overpriced. They're overcharging you because a lot of the things you could have done for free. Like, for example, um, I did buy the New York Pass when I was in New York just because I was really excited. I looked into it, but I didn't look hard enough, obviously. Um, majority of the, the museums in New York only take donations. So yeah, you can go there and donate, but technically I paid $23 for a ticket just to go 
to somewhere that only takes donations. A lot yeah. of places do have a historical background. So they do have nice botanical gardens. They have parks like Central Park. I know in New Orleans when I go, there's going to be um, Frenchman Street and Bourbon Street and the French Quarter and things like that. And it's just like a lot of it is sightseeing. And obviously, you don't have to pay to open your eyes and just look around and embrace like where you are. And then once you're there, you do have to plan for transportation. So I like to really give myself to the city. So if I go somewhere, I'm not going to Uber. I'm not going to like, it's pretty much just Uber because Uber does have a base charge of a certain amount. So let's say you're just going 15 minutes away. Um, Uber has like a $5 base amount. And then on top of that, you have to pay per mile or per minute, things like that. When in reality, um, if you really wanted to experience the city, you can take a subway. You can walk in New York. I pretty much walked eight miles just because everything is pretty close knit. But you can't say, oh, it's a 23 minute walk. I don't want to walk it like. Just go have fun, take the walk and enjoy every minute of it. And that's what I would do at least. Um, so I would definitely say use subways, use streetcars, look up the city buses, get a map, you know, really be Dora the Explorer, bro. Just really give yourself to wherever you're going because at the end of the day, a $5 Metro pass can last me pretty much like the day if I'm just, transferring you get me because once you're in the subway you can transfer as many times as possible and that's just that so you can get from from let's say queens to manhattan for two dollars and 25 cents rather than ubering or taking a taxi or anything like that always plan okay so i have to take the e train to the b train and then i'll be where i need to be before you even just like go ahead and go but like be, you should be able to do these things. You should be able to just go out, take the subway, enjoy the experience, you know? Also, when it comes to budgeting, you have to, like I said, you have to include every aspect. So if you know you're going to be eating, drinking, clubbing, things like that, try to look up those prices before you even get to where you're going. So I would say if you're going for a two-day trip, I would say plan 50, make a budget of $50 for food. If you know you're going somewhere where you're going to be drinking, like in New Orleans, um, I would say make $50 for drinks and $50 for food, you know? And if you're only going for two days, but obviously it depends on the duration of your stay. Other than that, I would also recommend padding your budget. Um, so just add a little $10 here, $10 there, $20 here, $20 there, just in case. If another expense does come up, you are prepared for that expense. You're not just going to be oh no, I just withdrew my account or anything like that. Like you're prepared, you know exactly what it's there for. And if an emergency comes up and you have to buy like four Metro passes or you end up going to other places, that's like five, 10, $15, you have that padding there. Also, this is just like a little tip on my behalf. Um, traveling is just fun in general. Being in a new environment is just fun in general. People do need those breaks. Sometimes you don't need to even do attractions. You don't even have to go into the museum. You don't even have to um, take that tour or do this or this and this. If you just want to travel and experience somewhere new, I would just say just take the city in your hands and make it yours. Paint the city polka dot. What is that called? Paint the city red. Yeah, let's paint the, like paint the city red. Just leave your hotel, walk around, just sightsee. Sightseeing is like one of my favorite things while I travel. At least. If you don't know what you want to do when you are traveling, I would always say watch vlogs. I love, love, love watching vlogs, and that's what inspired me to start vlogging. Just so I can get ideas to do when I'm traveling. Like, oh, I googled. Um, you can Google fifty fun things to do while in so and so. But a vlogger can know a secret thing or something fun that they did. And you're like, wow, that looks like so much fun. Let me look into that. And that might not be on the same list that's advertised. Because they do usually advertise the most popular and most expensive things. But sometimes just doing little things are always fun as well. But all in all, guys, that's my personal advice on how to travel on a budget. So if you guys did like this video and did like my tips and everything like that, I can tell you how I personally budget my money um, and how I maintain being a student as well as working three jobs and traveling. So thank you for watching this video. If you did like it, please share it to your friends. I'm sure they want to travel too. And like, subscribe. And thanks for supporting me, guys. Bye.